I think I mentioned that there's a quickie cast on in the manual that I'm not a fan of. Nothing wrong with it, but it doesn't tend to work very well for me, and it's not very good looking. Here is what I personally do on many machines when I want a quickie cast on and looks are not an issue. I am manually weaving the yarn over and under each needle. Now, out of your field of vision, I'm threading it into the carriage as per normal. Now when I knit across, the needles that have yarn on top of them will behave as though they have stitches on top of them. And the others will catch a loop of yarn. Forward. Knit. Now everybody should have a true stitch. Forward. Knit. And now I should be able to add my claw weights and continue. Sometimes people ask me which is the correct way to hang a claw weight. Either one is fine. I'm going to have one going front and one going back here. Whichever way you get purchased the most easily works. Just if you orient them claws out, don't scrape your knuckles on them. But there's not any good reason that you would unless you were over here binding off. And even so, you should be able to avoid it with reasonable care. Now we're going to look at some fair isle. This is very unusual. This knob is set to the all the way closest to us position. Both of these are set on part. They're both part buttons are depressed, in other words. Setting number one on each holding cam lever. Yes, do engage the tuck buttons for Fair Isle. Now, watch what happens. With these settings, this is the normal working position, whereas usually the needles are oriented about like this. The carriage will bring them out to this position when, you, when we change the change knob as we have. So when I ratchet, some needles come out a little farther. And this is the feature that tells the machine which needles to knit in color one and color two. In this case, pink and blue. And it did work. But we manually lay in, they call it the laying in yarn in some old manuals. We manually lay in color two. Color one is feeding as usual. I'm using the same one by one or alternate button pattern that I've been using all along for tuck and slip. Actually, one of the best things about this machine is that you can change up what you're doing in midstream without any fuss and make very elaborate patterns without very elaborate changes. Well, I'll make one change for you here without changing the buttons. I'm going to move the lever that changes the console position. Did you see that? And now when I do everything else the same, my stripes should change orientation. I'll do a few rows so you'll get to see the change. So this is not quite as fast as knitting with a punch card. On the other hand, punch cards wear out and you have to punch them. And as a punch card wears out, it begins to make errors. Don't get me wrong, I love my punch card machines, but there is a lot to be said for this design as well. With this laying in yarn, be sure you allow enough slack that stitches can form. If I was pulling down hard here, or there wasn't room for the yarn to draw across, um, it would be very tight and it wouldn't make attractive stitches. On the other hand, a little bit of tension down as I start across avoids unsightly loops at the edges. And if you fail to remember to lay in the second color, you will get dropped stitches because the machine is expecting 
there to be yarn there. So it is pulling the needles forward and back to knit. Now I'm going to do what we call scrapping off, which is just cancel all the special stitches and knit a few rows with plain yarn. In this case, I'm not going to change yarns. Normally, we scrap off with a contrasting color. I've got a loop on that gate peg. If that happens, you'll have trouble knitting, so release it as I did. And now, when we scrap off, normally we just break the yarn, knit across, and of course, it'll come right off the machine. And that is what we did. Cute, huh? One other little detail I should tell you, and I did do it, and it was a good idea. Because of these floats, the straight pieces of yarn where one color did not knit, they don't stretch as much as a true stitch stretches, see? Fair Isle tends to be a little bit narrower than the same amount of needles in use in stockinette and the stitching be a little bit tighter and it can be downright stiff so if you're making a garment and don't want stiff we normally raise the stitch size one whole number for knitting fair isle and i did that i'd been knitting here on stitch size seven and i enlarged to stitch size eight and was pleased with the re results Let's take a closer look at what goes on on the console. You can see those pointers indicating things. You know that when I ratchet over here, needles are selected. Let's take some, a look at some other features. When I move that lever, The whole console moves over relative to the needles, and the selection mechanism is down inside there. So when we only have one down, one up, one down, one up, moving this over will directly reverse the pattern. If these needles were going to knit last time, they'll be slipped this time, and vice versa cancel them all. Now just pretend we wanted to make checks. I could depress four and leave four up and knit usually six rows would be how you would make a square if you're using four needles. So we would have four needles knitting pink for six rows, four needles knitting blue for six rows. Now to make it into checks, we would cancel and select these four instead. And if that was pink and blue, it would now, well, it's hard to point to you on, but what would happen is the colors would reverse themselves because the needles in each position would no longer be the same group. In this case, there are four to the right that came forward. And the very edge one did not. It would be the start of the next pattern. Now let me cancel, leaving these same needles in play, but pushing them back so they can, can be selected again. And depress the four first buttons rather than final buttons. See, these are the ones that came forward last time. This time, the next four came forward. And because it's a matter of which ones come forward, determining which colors knit, <laughs> the pattern would be reversed. Of course, as you know, when we're doing Fair Isle, it's really some forward and more forward. But this shows you how the selection is working. And by the way, if your buttons aren't staying fully depressed and popping nicely up and down like these are, Usually the mechanism is not broken. Usually it's dirty and sluggish under there. 
could just be old grease, could be some fuzz, could even be a little bit of rust that you have to clean out. We made a video on going in there and doing that to a machine that wasn't working as nicely as this one. And by the time it left, it was working just beautifully.